So my name is Anthony Delon. I'm an actor, I'm a French actor, and I'm also a writer. Is it enough? Hi, Anthony. Hi. Nice to hi, meet you. Hi. Well, you started in the 80s working with two of the greatest directors we have had in Italy, Alberto Latuada and Francesco Rosi. What memory do you have of the Italian cinema of those years? Okay. Um, so, there were two very different experiences. <clears throat> Latuada actually was my first, the, my first movie. And we shot in Rome, we shot in Lago d'Orta and in Cinecitta. So it was, it was, I mean, working in Cinecitta um, in the 80s, it was like a, like a movie by itself, meaning that uh, it, it was like a dream, you know, getting into the studio. And of course, it, it reminded me of my childhood because in Paris we had big studios. And I grew up in studios, so all the smell of the smoke and everything it reminds me of all my childhood. Anyway, so <clears throat> La Tuada was, yeah, a, a great experience. Um, but then Francesco Rosi was a major experience. Because first, we did the movie about uh, Chronicle for Death Foretold, which was one of the biggest uh, book of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who's a South American uh, writer. And we shot in Colombia with fantastic actors. I mean, Jean Maria Volonté um, himself, and uh, also or uh, Orne Lamuti and Rupert Everett. Lucia Bosé. Yeah, Lucia Bosé, absolutely. She was playing my mother. She was beautiful. She was great. Um, and we shot in Colombia, and it was a big thing. And we went to Cannes. We 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 uh, opened the Cannes Festival that year. So I mean, it was the big, big, big experience. Um, yeah, that was something special, very special. Um, and that's it. What would you say is the main difference between Italian actors and French actors? I can't really tell because I mean it was in the in the days, okay? So for example, if you take Jeanne Maria Volonté, I have to say that Jean Maria really impressed me. Because he is not a volubile actor. Yes, um, if we see the Fellini movies, we see the Italian actors, they are very what we call in France volubile, meaning they move a lot and they have a lot of, you know, expressions. Volonté was very intense, very settled. He was so powerful. I was very impressed by him. I also worked in the future, I mean, after Chronicle, I worked with um, Gassman. Um, we did a series together. And, uh, and he was like that too. Gassman was very... Well, even if he did in the past some movies where he was very like comedy, but when I worked with him, I felt a very strong power. Um, then, you know, actors are actors, and, and uh, I think today and in these past 20 years, it's the movie uh, industry who changed, and the movies changed. So, of course, the actors are adapting themselves, but I remember uh, Romanzo Criminale. And uh, all these actors were very settled too. I mean, it's just a different time. Um, and they were very, very strong. Yeah, so I don't think there is a major uh, difference between Italian and French actor, but there's a difference between French cinema and Italian cinema. I really love French movies and the concept of rebellion and melancholy present in French movies. What relationship do you have with these two aspects? Rebellion. Well, when you said rebellion, I think about James Dean. <laughs> of course. He was a rebel without a cause. Oh, yes. I think about Jean-Paul Belmondo. Yes. Uh, in in, uh, yeah, in the, the Godard movie, of course. That was a uh, cult. Um, well, I think uh, rebellion, um, it's a good thing if you have a drive. Meaning that today, I think that people uh, rebel themselves for many things, and maybe for too many things. And I think it has to be, 
something uh, uh, strong, who really comes from your soul, inside of you. Like freedom, for example. But also freedom, I mean, today, it has different levels. So, anyway, in the cinema, being a rebel, it's always fun. And melancholy, uh, <coughs> I don't really like melancholy. I no, I, I, I like little moments of melancholy, but I like the nice melancholy. I don't like the, the dark melancholy. I, I like sometimes, you know, I, when you are, you can be con contemplative, and, um, and then this contemplation brings you to a nice melancholy, you know, and, and, and takes you into thoughts. I like this one. I don't like the dark one. And I don't like also people who are too melancholic all day long. And it's true that in some French movies we had that uh, in a period, you know. Not today, maybe. Not today. Anthony, what is one aspect of your personality that no one would ever expect from you? Expect from me? My God. Hmm. No, it's not melancholy. It, does it have to be wild? I have few wild aspects in my personality. But the thing is that people know about it. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a secret, you know. I, I, I decided to be myself a long time ago. And, uh, and actually, I don't really care, never really care about conventions. And what people think or what people, you know, could, yeah, think about me or what I do. So, um, I always live my life the way I wanted to live it. So, of course, sometimes, you know, you, you break glasses, what we say. But, um, so I did some wild things and maybe you don't know, but in my country people do. So, there's no secret about that. But now, I have to say, if you want something that people doesn't know, which is not wild, I also have a nice side and a calm side. So yes, I'm, I'm meditating, for example. Can you tell us a line from a script that you will never forget? Well, actually, I, I, I thought about this this morning. And uh, for some reason today, I, I cannot remember. I had the, for, for many years a, a line in my head from a play that I did in 1994, 1994 about an American um, author called Julian Green, and it was called South. And it vanished. And I don't remember. So right now, if you tell me, can you give us a line? Uh, I cannot. But I can try later. Okay, I'd like to say goodbye to you by playing a game we always play here at Deluge. Can you tell us your three favorite songs or artists, the ones you love and that represent you? Songs. Whoa. I liked a lot you two. You know, the album The Joshua Tree was one of my favorite. Um, I was a big fan, I mean, I'm still a big fan of Bob Marley. So, you know, I mean, <clears throat> songs like uh, War or Natural Mystic or, I mean, all of them, they're just like so, so fantastic. And what else? Um, I like Marianne Faithful. But I was, I'll say that my favorite, you know, in France we have something. We have like, okay, two groups. I mean, the two biggest rock group in the world. Beatles, the Beatles, and the Rolling Stones, okay? So that's something we do in France, like, who are you? You are Beatles or you are Rolling Stones? Me, I'm Beatles. I'm a big fan of the Beatles um, until the end. I mean, for me, it's like, and I know all the songs by heart, which I'm not going to sing now. Uh, because when I was a child, my mother was listening a lot to the Beatles. 
So I was reading my, my comics <clears throat> and listening to the bands of the Beatles. So um, for me, it's like, okay. So let's say you two, Marianne Faithful and the Beatles. Ah, thank you because finally someone mentioned the Beatles and Bob Marley. You like them too? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, finally, but no one say Beatles and Bob Marley. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know because they, they want to look young, maybe. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Grazie, ciao. Thanks. Grazie.